America's founding fathers, the original squad of revolutionaries, were more than just signatures on the Declaration of Independence. Battle-hardened warriors of the Revolutionary War and masterminds of the Constitution. They were complex characters, each with his own set of flaws and foibles. They were human after all, making decisions that were sometimes as questionable as their fashion sense. In essence, the Founding Fathers were like the first draft of a great novel. Brilliant, but with plenty of room for edits. Welcome to Wicked History, everyone. If there are other historical bizarreries you'd like to see explored, drop a suggestion in the comments. Before there was a White House, there was this guy, George Washington, setting the bar for all future Oval Office occupants. He was the face of the American Revolution and the first to take the helm of the newly formed United States. Think of him as the debut artist who topped the charts with his first release. But even founding fathers have their secrets. Young George, long before he became the face on the dollar bill, dabbled in some old-school romantic texting, by which I mean writing love letters. And not just to any damsel, but a married one. The contents of these letters are more guarded than the recipe for his wooden teeth. More on that later. Whether these letters were the 18th century equivalent of a cheeky flirt or something more, we'll never really know. Washington, keeping his private life more secure than Fort Knox. Speaking of myths, let's bust a couple. The cherry tree story, pure fiction. Young George didn't go around swinging an axe at innocent trees. And those wooden teeth, another fabrication. His dentures were more exotic, a mix of hippopotamus and elephant ivory, and possibly human teeth. Yes, the father of the country had a mouthful of animal parts and other people's teeth, the original recycling pioneer. Washington's smile was less about dental hygiene and more about a mini wildlife exhibit. Thomas Jefferson, writer, thinker, president, and a DIY enthusiast of the highest order. He penned the Declaration of Independence, essentially ghostwriting America's breakup letter with Britain. As the third president, he doubled the size of the country with the Louisiana Purchase talk about a shopping spree. Jefferson was the kind of renaissance man who could draft a constitution and design a building without breaking a sweat. But Jefferson's story isn't all liberty and enlightenment. He was the first president to float the idea of a Native American removal plan, setting a precedent for policies that would lead to centuries of injustices. And as for his views on women in intellectual roles, let's just say Jefferson wouldn't have been a fan of TED Talks by female speakers. He gave a reluctant thumbs up to Abigail Adams but was otherwise unimpressed by the political banter of Parisian Ceylon ladies. His take on women in office was about as progressive as his quill pen. Jefferson's stance on slavery adds more shadows to his legacy. Despite publicly denouncing slavery, he kept slaves himself and is believed to have fathered children with one of them, Sally Hemings. His views on racial equality were, to put it mildly, problematic. He believed African Americans were inferior, a belief starkly at odds with the ideals he wrote about. It's like he was trying to juggle the enlightenment and ignorance at the same time, and dropping both balls. Benjamin Franklin, the ultimate renaissance man of the 18th century. He wasn't just flying kites in thunderstorms, he was busy being a scientist, author, inventor, and a charming US ambassador to France. Franklin was the kind of guy who could write an essay, invent bifocals, and charm a French court all before breakfast. But Benny had his vices. His love life was as charged as his electrical experiments. A known womanizer, he also fathered an illegitimate son, William, who turned out to be a loyalist during the Revolutionary War. Talk about family drama. It seems Franklin could discover electricity, but couldn't quite manage to spark a good relationship with his son. Franklin's parties were, well, electrifying in the most literal sense. He'd entertain guests with glasses connected to batteries, ensuring each sip came with a shocking surprise. And let's not forget his turkey experiments. He'd electrocute them, not just for science, but for the dinner table too. Imagine being a guest. One moment you're getting zapped with your drink, the next you're dining on a turkey that was part of a science experiment. Franklin's parties were the 18th century equivalent of a mad scientist's lab meets a gourmet kitchen. John Adams, not just a founding father, but also a founding grumbler. He served as the first vice president and the second president of the United States, a delegate to the Continental Congress, and a Puritan with principles as stiff as his collars. Adams was the kind of guy who took his responsibilities as seriously as his moral code. However, Adams's presidency wasn't all liberty and justice for all. 
he signed the Alien and Sedition Acts, which were about as welcoming as a closed door. These laws let him deport foreigners who seemed shady and criminalized criticizing the government. Imagine if tweeting against the government could land you in jail. Adams basically made that a law. So much for free speech under his watch. Adams' crankiness was legendary. Historian Jack D. Warren dubbed him the crankiest founding father, and that's saying something in a group that included the likes of Hamilton and Jefferson. Adams had beef with almost everyone. He called Benjamin Franklin the old conjurer, not exactly a term of endearment. His opinion of George Washington? He thought Washington was all style and no substance, basically the 18th century equivalent of an Instagram influencer. Adams' talent for holding grudges was almost as impressive as his political resume. Alexander Hamilton, the financial whiz kid of the nascent United States, played a pivotal role as the nation's first Treasury Secretary. He wasn't just counting pennies, he was crafting an entire economic system. As George Washington's right-hand man during the Revolutionary War, Hamilton was more than just a soldier. He was a wordsmith, penning much of the Federalist Papers. Think of him as the ghostwriter for the early American dream. However, Hamilton's life wasn't all about dollars and cents. He found himself entangled in a steamy soap opera-esque scandal with Maria Reynolds. In a twist that even reality TV couldn't script, Reynolds's husband decided to turn a profit from this affair, essentially pioneering political blackmail. He even had the audacity to ask Hamilton for a government job, talk about mixing business with pleasure. When Hamilton decided to go public with the affair, he didn't just spill the beans, he poured the entire can. His confession was so detailed it would make a tabloid blush, shocking his poor wife and the prudish public of his time. Hamilton's story ends not with a bang, but with a bullet. In a duel fueled by pride and politics, he faced Aaron Burr, the original frenemy. In a lethal twist of irony, the man who wrote himself into history was written out of it by a single shot. Burr, in his pursuit of political clout, ended up shooting down his own career along with Hamilton. Talk about a dual consequence. And so, we close the book on our founding fathers, these architects of America, with their all-too-human blueprints. Until our next historical escapade, keep your wits sharp and your stockings pulled high.